Okay, in this video I'm going to do some practice problems. Hope you can see all the stuff on the screen. I'm going to solve the 10 problems, or 12 problems, on the right-hand side of the screen using the space on the left, and we're going to go through them pretty quickly. Um, this is just should be a brief overview, pretty simple practice of something you already know how to do. Here we've got 5 times 5 times 5. That means 5 to the third power. That's what exponent notation means. Uh, these are going to be the A columns, so I'm just going to number them. 1, 2. Here we've got 16 times 16 times 16 times 16 times 16 times 16. So you just count how many times are you multiplying. You count it six times. So it's going to be 16 to the sixth power. The exponent represents the number of times that you're multiplying something. 3 fifths times 3 fifths. We're multiplying the quantity 3 fifths. That's our base. And we are multiplying it twice. So the exponent is a 2. Okay, number 4. Here we're multiplying the quantity negative 1 half. So the number we're multiplying is negative one half. That's cool. And count how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six to the sixth power. Actually, this one you can simplify because it's a negative number raised to the sixth power. Um, anytime the power is an even number, if you multiply negative times a negative, an even number of times it's going to come out to be positive. So you could write this as just one half to the sixth power. Um, you could even write it as one over. 2 to the 6th. So any of those three are the same. Probably the <laughs> middle one or the last one. That's my dog barking. The middle one or the last one are the two uh, best ways to write it. Okay, number 5. Uh, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to be 3 to the 4th power. And finally, number 6. Negative 9 times negative 9. Again, we've got the base, negative 9, to an even numbered power. So negative 9 to the second power. The negative uh, doesn't matter because it's to an even exponent. This means we're multiplying an even number of times. And if you know negative times a negative is a positive. So we could just write this as 9 squared. OK, that's the first 6 right here. Let's move on to the next 6. We'll make this short and sweet. OK, 1b, number 1, negative 0 0.07. So negative 0 0.07 squared, because it's coming up there twice, uh, equals 0 0.07 squared. Again, because it's squared, the negative sign does not matter. Number 2, this should be simple. 87 times 87 is 87 squared. Next up, number 3, 0.06. Um, do you need to put parentheses? No. Uh, does it make it easier to see exactly what you're squaring? Yes. So sometimes it's nice to put parentheses there, although it's not required. Negative 11 squared squared, negative 11 times negative 11, again, because it's an even exponent. Now, if it would have been to the third power or to the fifth power, you'd have to leave the negative there. You couldn't uh, you couldn't get rid of it. But because, oopsie, because it's an even exponent, you can get rid of the negative sign, because the negative times the negative is positive. A repeating theme there. Negative 8 times negative 8. I'm just going to zoom straight to the final answer, 8 squared. And finally, number 6, 36 times 36 times 36. How many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So 36 to the 6th power. So hopefully those were all pretty painless for you. Um, just a quick overview and practice problems of exponent notation. Uh, I'm going to do some more in just a minute with variable bases. OK, welcome back. Here's a bunch of practice problems that we can do using uh, variables, uh, variable exponents. So look at this first one. You've got x to the third, quantity to the fourth power. So let me get some space uh, here. So number one. This means x to the third times, and we're going to do it, sorry, my handwriting is terrible. Um, we're going to do it four times. So x to the third, x to the third, x to the third. So that little four over there means you're going to do whatever is inside the parentheses four times. Now, clearly, you can look at this and say, um, add up the exponents. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 12. So the final answer is x to the 12th. And our shortcut, of course, was that you multiply the two exponents together. So for the rest of these, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, show out the long way. I'm just going to write down the answer. So s squared to the second power is s squared times s squared for a grand total of s to the fourth. And I encourage you to pause these videos and work out the problems and then check your answers. Um, but I'm going to go through quickly. m to the fifth to the third power means m to the fifth times m to the fifth times m to the fifth 
for a grand total of m to the 15th power. Okay, number 4. Negative m squared squared. This one I'll write out because it's negative. Negative m squared. Squared means multiply it by itself, or multiply it by itself two times. Okay, negative times a negative is a positive. m squared times m squared is m to the fourth. So there's no negative sign, and it's m to the fourth power. Okay, let me go here. Negative of m squared squared. So here it's negative of m squared m squared. So the key difference is that in this one the negative one is the negative inside the parentheses, which means it's getting squared. The negative is happening twice. But this one here, the negative is outside the parentheses. So the only thing getting squared is the m squared. The m squared times the m squared gives you m to the fourth, but this negative is outside the parentheses. There's only one minus sign, so it doesn't cancel with anything. So our final answer is still is negative. Okay, let's get some more here. Number six, okay. Scroll down. Number six. So here, the three y cubed is being raised to the fourth power. So we've got three y cubed. I'm going to write it out just because it has uh, two things in there. 3y cubed, 3y cubed, and 3y cubed. So I hope you can see you've got a 3, a 3, a 3, and a 3. So you should just look at the numbers first and then the variables sep separately. So we've got 3 to the fourth power using just the bases, just the threes. Now look at your y variable. How many y's do you have? You have y, three here, three here, three here, three here. Grand total of y to the twelfth. So you should look at your numbers and your bases, sorry, your, your numbers and your variables separately and figure out how many you have independently of each other. Okay, number seven. Uh, six y to the fifth squared. That means six squared. Basically you're just distributing that x1 in. And y to the fifth squared is y to the tenth. Okay, I know I'm going quickly. Please pause, ask questions in class if you have them. Number eight, yz to the third. Okay, that's going to be y to the third, z to the third. Because whatever is in there, whatever is in those parentheses is happening three times. So that y is happening three times, y cubed, and that z is happening three times, z cubed. Okay, keep going. Number nine. Oh, here's a fun one. Five f to the sixth, j to the first squared. So look at all those things that are being squared. The 5 is being squared, so here's 5 squared. f to the 6th squared is f to the 6th times f to the 6th, which is f to the 12th. j to the 1st squared is j to the 1st times j to the 1st for a grand total of j squared. Okay, scroll down, we'll keep going here. Um, let's do one more and then call it quits. Number 10. Negative of 3x squared. So the negative, again, it's not squared, so the negative stays out front. Then the 3 is being squared for 3 squared. The x is being squared for x squared. And the y is being squared for y squared. But the negative stays there because the negative is not being squared. Okay, you're welcome to do some more of these problems for yourself if you want. In fact, this website, it is algebrahelp.com slash worksheets, blah, blah, blah. But if you just go to algebrahelp.com and type exponent worksheets, you should probably be able to find it. Okay, good luck. We'll do lots more of these in class. Uh, all right, see you next time.